It's two weeks later and our leafy greens are shooting away. Now it's time to put in our heat loving vegetables. They're big enough to plant out now and they'll grow faster if you wait until temperatures are no less than 13 or 14 degrees Celsius at night. Layla's chosen the plants that she's used to growing and using back in her home country of Iran where the weather is really hot in summer. Now the fruiting plants that we've got, eggplant, chili, capsicum and cucumber, really need a lot of nutrients underneath them as those roots start to spread through the container. When we filled it to start with, we put a lot of sheep pellets underneath, so that's the long-term stuff. What we're going to do now is put chicken manure around them just as the roots start to move out. They've got nutrients to grab and really just push that growth through. Now if you do the cucumber, because we're going to train it along the fence, and if you do the two lettuce plants, I'll finish with the chilli and the capsicum. That's it, just firm it into place, just nice gentle pressure. That's it, spot on. Now these are loose leaf lettuces, so you pick the leaves off as you need them, which are really great for just small households. But the big thing is they need a lot of nutrient underneath. Remember, you're picking the leaves off and you want leaves to be growing, so it's that constant feed, pick, feed, pick process that you're actually doing. Now Layla, the last one I'll plant is the capsicum, which is a Marconi Red, beautiful sweet capsicum to have. This one's a little bit on the small side, so we actually go put a cloche over it, which is this, so it's a recycled milk bottle. We've chopped the bottom off, take the top off it, so it acts like a little miniature glass house. So that just sits like that, and that plant will fill that. Once it's filled in through here, then take the bottle away, because the plant will be nice and big and sturdy enough to survive on its own. Oh, okay. If you want them to grow faster, you can actually do the same thing with these other vegetables, the eggplant, the chilli and the cucumber. Layla's planting marigolds and cornflowers to attract bees and beneficial insects, which are particularly important for our fruiting vegetables. We've grouped all of our Mediterranean-based herbs into this one planter. They love the free draining soil that we've got here. We won't put any of the chicken manure in it that we put into the other container because they just don't need that level of nutrient. They're literally a harder growing plant. Perfect for containers because they like to be kept a bit dry. By comparison, the mint is a wet loving plant. Roots of mint grow like crazy and they can take over a container. So we've put it in its own container. Now a mint, as well as being a wet loving plant, is a gross feeder, it loves fertiliser underneath it. So we're putting a big handful of our chicken manure at the base of it. Now we're putting together our upside down tomato planter here at Layla's. So we're using a stainless steel bucket, it's strong, sturdy, the main consideration that the handles are well attached to the side. Don't use those basic laundry plastic buckets, they'll simply break. In the bottom we put a triangle with two centimetre sides, ready to put the plant through. Next we have to actually take our tomato plant and remove just about all the soil off the roots. We do this very gently, we don't want to break any of the roots. Just a nice root mass, no soil. What we've also done is cut a 20 centimetre diameter circle with a slit through to the centre so that we can actually roll up to form a cone. So the tomato goes into the centre like that and we roll it round to a nice tight cone. And then what we do is we push them very gently through the triangle at the bottom. We want the roots nicely in. Now it needs to be quite a tight fit because you just don't want the water simply pouring out through the hole. So the next thing I'll do is just sit it between two objects. In this case we're going to use our two grow bags just so the tomato plant is not crushed and we can start filling it with our good Revital potting mix. After a layer of potting mix, we add a handful of neem granules to ward off psyllids and some gypsum, which is a calcium source which tomatoes need and it helps prevent blossom end rot. We don't need to fill it much higher than that. Now remember you're dealing with height, you're dealing with weight, so safety has to be the most important thing you think about first and last. Thank you.
Now our upside down tomato bucket, when it gets watered, will drip straight into our large planter here. If it misses, windy day, it goes straight into our mint, which is a water loving plant. It's all planted here at Layla's. Over at Pascal's, we're planting a cherry tomato and its companion plants, basil and marigolds, which help ward off pests, as well as a capsicum and some parsley. Hunter, the tomato we're using is an heirloom tomato, so it's big, it's rangy, it has lots of fruit on it. So we need to put a big, strong steel Y stake in to yeah, support cause, it. Because the fruit is heavy for the tomato. The fruit is heavy for the tomato, and you always put the stake in first. And you don't use a bamboo one because it just starts to fold over. This is the parsley, Italian parsley. Ready? Dig the hole. In hard. That's it. Pull it back hard. Big hole. That's it. You've done this before. Well done. We're actually going to put the marigolds in there. Perfect. Now, and look at that. Nicely firmed in. Okay, let's put a little bit of neem in there for psyllids. And a little bit of gypsum to give it an extra calcium kick. Hunter, what I'm going to get you to do is to spread fertilizer everywhere, and that's going to be all the nutrients that the plants will need. As we've mixed fruiting and leafy green vegetables, we're not adding extra nitrogen in the form of chicken manure in this container. Instead, we use a light dusting of a well-balanced fertilizer. Using a watering can is the best way to irrigate our gardens, mainly because different vegetables need different amounts of water. The other reason is that you're interacting with your plants, so you'll notice any problems. Something might be a bit yellow and needs feeding, or there are holes and something's eating your plants. We're not keen on irrigation systems because they need easy access to a tap, and the plants don't need you quite so much. Caring for your plants is a basic requirement of a successful organic food garden. Now what we're going to do, Hunter, is put a cloche over the capsicum. It's like a little tiny miniature glass house. And it'll keep it nice and warm, especially at night, so it'll help grow, and you'll end up with a nice big strong plant. Oh, yeah. So, see, it's got no, no hole, no bottom, yeah. no top, so it just go, fits over the top. Do you want to put it over for me? That's it, push it in, that's it, perfect. That's all you need. Now Chantal and Clinton, their planter, they've got a beefsteak tomato, which is a nice big chunky one. The same Gardener's Delight that we put in at Pascal's, a beautiful cherry tomato. We've got our Marconi red capsicum, that nice sweet juicy one. And we've got a couple of basil and some marigold plants as companion planting for the tomatoes. And lastly we've got a cucumber which we're going to train along the fence. Our potatoes are growing beautifully, so it's time to roll up the sides of the bag a bit more and add some more potting mix, almost covering the tops of the plants. All done at Chantal and Clinton's. Next time we'll look at how the gardens are growing, discuss any issues that have come up, and show you how to keep the production up in those containers.